Welcome back to Most Amazing Top 10. I'm your host, Taylor McWaters, and here are the top 10 evil scientists who experimented with human crossbreeding, part two. Yeah, more curious scientists. Awesome. Starting our list off at number 10, Ilya Ivanov. Beginning in the late 1800s, here we go. Soviet biologists, they actually got permission from the country to breed hybrid ape humans. What did you get up to last summer? I'll never tell. She grafted an ovary into a chimp, and the goal was to fertilize Nora, the chimp, with human DNA. So they inseminated a group of chimps. None of them got pregnant, so instead they tried to flip the project up. Now this time, they had a human inseminated with the DNA of chimps. Yeah, the other way around. The, the, the volunteer number was low, obviously. Now before anything actually happened, this would have been an absolute train wreck. Before the project was underway, he was sent away to Kazakhstan. So we didn't get any more science projects after that point, thankfully. Yeah, let's just leave uh, monkeys alone. Number nine, human monkey hybrid. Guys, I wish this was fake, but it's not. So scientists, they're currently trying to make human monkey hybrids, like the title just said. They have high hopes that these experiments will succeed because monkeys and humans are similar genetically. So obviously, we're gonna try a few times. Spanish biologist Juan Carlos Esbesula Belmonte is working with monkey researchers in China right now to perform these experiments. So basically they're mixing human cells into monkey embryos and then just, they're just gonna see what happens, I guess. I don't know. Hope it goes well. Their objective is to grow a monkey whose organs are completely made of human cells. Doesn't that sound just terrifying when I say it out loud like that? Then they would use said animals and their organs for people that need them. Yeah, of course this is a little bit controversial in a few ways, so let's just keep moving on. Number eight, Jose Delgado. Okay, we're talking about mind control, so I'll give you a moment to put on your tinfoil hats. You might need those for this one. In the early 1900s, Jose Delgado graduated from the University of Madrid. Even lands a professorship at Yale University, but his mind, the whole time, his mind was focused on others. He had other ideas going on. He was committed to mind control, and his go-to method was implants. Yeah, electrode implants, first used with, you guessed it, primates. Yeah, three for three. Weird. He would use a remote control to make them do certain moves, even, you know, moving on to mind controlling a bull. So he was kind of changing the animal game up as he went. He liked to improvise. He got in the ring with said mind controlled bull, but then oddly enough, the bull was calm. It didn't attack. That's weird. Almost like there's an implant in his brain and he doesn't want to do anything. Reports say he stopped the bull last second before it charged. I call bull. I say there's a thing in his head and he wasn't sure what was up the entire time, little poor lad. And then next in the project line came the people. 25 people were tested on with said mind control device. Yeah, by electronically controlling the brain. He believes armies could be controlled down the road and until his death in 2011, he was upset that he wasn't cited as often in terms of mind control project in recent studies. Yeah, weird. Guy who mind controlled animals in the 1900s. We're trying not to do that maybe. I don't know, that's why we're not talking about you. Number seven, see through frogs. Here we go, just when you thought frogs were already hard to spot, boom, now they're invisible. Good luck catching them. Back in 2016, through artificial insemination, scientists successfully took the DNA of two kinds of recessive color frogs, black-eyed frogs and gray-eyed frogs. Then they combined them together to create a frog whose skin is now always translucent. They made, a, they made an X-Men of a frog, we love it. The see-through factor allows observation of organ growth or cancer formation, that's the human science thing. And it kind of helps when you can see the problem, I guess. No dissection needed for further study. Study, right just just looking just looking through you that's pretty uh, intrusive I don't know imagine being see-through all the time like hey pal my eyes are up here quit staring at my pancreas number six tigons let tigons be bygones let's never do this ever please I was gonna say liger but that's been used before we all know what that one looks like tigons were a real hybrid animal that you could see for yourself at both the London Zoo and the Manchester Zoo at one point in history this was of course back in the late 30s where folks didn't bat an eye towards these kind of projects or these kind of things yeah step on up and see the tigon a tiger head and a lion body and a tiger tail all together to make a big old pile of holy yeah, that's what happens when you put animals in the same cage. Sometimes they get along a little too well. Tigon hybrids were seen long before the 90s as well. In 1837, for example, Queen Victoria was gifted a Tigon. That's odd. They're like flowers or a hybrid creature. What do we give the queen? Number five. DIY. Not sure how many times I have to say this in life, but don't try any crossbreeding at home, or ever for that matter. 
Thanks, keep it up. Because things obviously go south. For example, back in 2010, a woman named Julie Leroy, she was working as an animal control officer when an owner of a pit bull puppy said she didn't want to keep her. Okay, this happens often. But when Julie saw the dog, she was in complete disbelief. She was like, yeah, I'll take this living animal. I'm not a monster, I can commit to this for sure, thanks. People who abandon animals also, you're the devil. Don't do that. This dog, it was a hybrid animal. It wasn't healthy, but all the more reasons why you should stick around. The dog had a squished up body, a huge jaw, and a bad underbite, and it was oddly shaped. But you gotta love him still. Look, he's so cute. God, I want him. A little bread dude. That's because the dog suffered from short spine syndrome. That's because they got the dog from a backyard breeding place who was carelessly breeding a bunch of these dogs together. Just no effort at all. No care. Thankfully, Julie did bring the dog home and gave her a loving time. Sweet little thing. Olivia and I want a dog so badly. I would definitely take this little hybrid lady in a heartbeat, for sure. A little bread bed for, oh, I love dogs. Even if they're, you know, hybrid and created in a backyard. Number four, glowfish. I never had a fish tank growing up. I don't know, not sure how I felt about a starfish just watching me sleep for hours on end. Back in 2012, Yorktown Technologies created hybrid glow fish. They were first created from zebra fish, but now there's a whole plethora of glow fish that you can purchase. Tiger barbs, rainbow sharks, you name it. Everything's glowy now. I guess to hype up Avatar 2, I don't know. I don't see why we needed hybrid glow fish. Why are we doing this? Can we stop? Bioluminescence is natural. We see octopus or deep sea fish that have it naturally. Scientists in Singapore were originally Originally aiming to modify fish to spot toxins in polluted water in an easier way. Cool. But on one hand, you're like, oh, these fish are pretty beautiful. They're glowy. Can I have one, please? Alan Blake, co-founder of said Yorktown Technologies, wanted them to glow only when near toxins. Now, this was back in 2003 when they first started. Guy wanted real life notifications in the water. Cool. Today, we're at a point where glowfish are just being sold to houses for reasons. Just because. Do you want a glowfish? I don't know. Am I the only one that's like out of the loop with like the glowy fish vibe? Comment down below if a glowfish is something you want or now want. Oops, sorry. Number three, Savannah cats. This one's been talked about for a while now. How do we feel about Savannah cats? I wanna hear about this one as well. In May 2012, the International Cat Association registered this Savannah cat as a new breed. It's official, we got a new cat. Just, just what the world needs, more, more cats. I'm allergic, so, you know, pardon my beef. The international cat community confirms it. Now, it all started in the late 80s when Judy Frank crossbred a male several with a domestic Siamese. The offspring, in turn, was appropriately named Savannah. Yeah, now we have cats with big ass ears, and they're so cute. I can't help it, they are so cute. Domestic cats mixed with wild African cats. I mean, it sounds like you're gonna get a cat. I don't know how to tell you. This is like a science experiment that they're like, oh. It worked. And apparently they're great. Apparently they're not too crazy temper-wise, but they're fun and they're energetic. Great for families. Who knew? Better than glowfish. Any day. Any day. Number two, pig human. Scientists at the Salk Institute for Biological Scientists, what a mouthful that was, have created a human-pig hybrid. Yeah, in 2017, when worlds collide, let's do it. An embryo was placed in an adult pig for four weeks. And then when it was taken out and further analyzed, the embryos, not only one, survived, but they also contained some human cells. So their hope now was to grow human organs inside of pigs instead of, you know, waiting for a donor. Impatient, but okay, we're listening. In 1910, zoologists figured out that it might even be possible to create hybrids between humans and their closest relatives as well. Yeah, no matter how this ends, either Planet of the Apes or Planet of the Pigs, I did my part, okay? I recycled. I didn't f with animal DNA, like Jurassic Park. I just kind of got a job. I don't know. Hands are clean. And finally, number one, Stubbins Firth. We saved Firth for first. Let's do it. This is one of the craziest science projects I've ever heard of, so buckle up. Stubbins Firth, a researcher from Pennsylvania back in the late 1700s. First of all, as you can probably guess, methods back in the 1700s were often messy and pretty much illegal in every way. Firth was a doctor in training at the time, and he decided to prove to the world that yellow fever was not contagious. Yeah, imagine if you had Twitter. Firth would surgically insert vomit from his patients with yellow fever. He would insert vomit into his body. He would insert all their yuck into his wounds, all over his face, his eyes, you name it. He was trying to get it. He was going the extra, I'm gonna throw up. He was going the extra mile, all in the name of medical research. Even urine and saliva too. Anything yucky, just, he was just, ah, uh, he was rubbing it in. Firth, to all of our surprise, did not get sick. He was proud of that one. He told everybody the news loudly. He mansplained it at like 4 a.m. We look back now though and we realize Firth just sampled late stage patients. So they were further along. Much further, say, than the contagious period. So basically he volunteered to dump all the uh, on his uh. Yeah, science, history is gross. 
Science as well, it gets a little messy sometimes. Those are the top 10 evil scientists who performed human experiments. I'm Taylor McWaters, I'll do this again sometime. I don't know, I'm gonna go throw up. That was a hard couple. Hit that thumbs up, please, bye.